Many times, when it comes down to cable testing, it's a very iterative process. We have to do it one at a time. But our friends at Fluke Network actually have a new cable tester, the Link IQ, that's actually going to help us to get beyond that. Find out more next. That's right, our friends at Fluke Network have sent us one of their newest products here, the Link IQ, that is a cable tester for us that we can actually end up using to help us to actually, well, not go through that iterative process anymore. Now, inside, when you actually get one of these, you of course have well, this big gigantic screen that makes everything easy to see. And it's fairly simple. You simply press the button and the idea is that it begins to turn on and soon you'll actually be ready to do some testing once everything is turned on. So it doesn't take that much of a process. Included in what you might also end up seeing is of course an adapter. This allows us to plug in the cable as well as the tester and one of these different remote IDs that we see over here. And of course there's a power cord to this. Now the neat thing about this power cord is it comes with multiple adapters. So regardless of where you are in this country or anywhere else, right? You can actually change it out and you can switch it to a different interface for you. So all that will pretty much come in the package. Now in terms of the battery life itself, it's done great. Since we've actually received it to be able to do some testing, I haven't had to actually plug this thing in yet one time. And I've been running through several different tests to kind of help us out here. So it actually is kind of a neat thing. Now, one of the things we want to do is actually talk about this idea of cable testing and how this works. So you have these devices over here that will allow you to plug into an RJ45 uh, jack uh, and actually be able to do some testing with it, especially when it comes down to cable. There has to be a return signal to get the different IDs that you end up seeing here. So notice there's remote ID7. I actually have going all the way up to remote ID2. The one, you may have it in some uh, particular package and some of them you won't. You may even see some additional attachments as well. So the combination of doing this for cable testing is actually fairly simple. And I'll show you how easy it is. It, you don't really even need a super gigantic manual to figure out how, how all this works. So let me remove this and we'll actually test three different cables here in a fairly short manner uh, as well. So I have this very short cable in front of us right here and I want to do some testing with it. Well, how do we do that? I take this adapter and I plug it into one end of it and then we're going to take one of these. I'll take remote ID three and I'll plug it in to the other end in that simple fashion. Now, once I have that done at the very top, you can see where they have a nice RJ 45 and ethernet connector for us. And I simply plug, oop, let me make sure I turn that around. I plug that in and now the whole thing is actually plugged in the way it needs to. And here is the connector end that we see from that point. Let me adjust the contrast a little bit. And so this is a nice little feature where this way we can make it show up on screen and we can see all of the different things we can do with this particular cable as well. There's a shield test. We can even allow for crossover cables if we want to. We can even adjust for the pinout on the uh, 568A versus the 568B, for example. And we'll leave that one alone. We can even go and say what the test limit is going to be such as being able to actually say what we want it to be able to do. For example, right now, I know that I have a CAT6 cable. I can adjust it for 1000 base T, but if I'm doing something like Wi-Fi 6 in terms of wiring, I may choose to go ahead and send it all the way up to 10 G base here for something like that. We're just going to do the simple test on this one uh, too. So I can hit OK and that brings me back. And there's some other things, of course, you can do. There's also a power over ethernet test here, the ability to auto increment, and then even different sounds and the way that you see numbering systems, date, time, you name it, all these features are available to us to be able to use if we choose to uh, change some of those settings. So if I go back on the home screen, now I have this auto test, okay? Now, doing the auto test actually does two things for us. One, we, have, we can actually do an individual cable test or I can do a switch test. Auto just says, hey, select for me. You're smart enough to figure this out, so you do it. So we'll go ahead and see how smart this device is. I'll simply hit auto test and now you'll end up seeing, oh, look at that. There is a failure on this particular cable. And we can tell, of course, by the background and I can verify as I can actually show you, there it is, remote ID three. So I actually know that this is the proper cable and I can see that there is some, there are some different issues that we see. And down here, you can even see some different markings such as the wire mapping it absolutely shows that something is wrong and it even marks out the individual cables that something is going on. 
That's perfectly fine. Now, let's say that I'm in a hurry and I don't have time to do this. Down here at the bottom where it says Save As, I can simply hit Save As. And at this point, you can have a test ID. You, of course, can mark that as whatever you want to. It will generate and auto-generate a, a test ID for us. We can even say what the project name is going to be if we're actually working in a particular project and even the operator's name, and we'll just simply save it as that. And that will go ahead and save that particular result. Now, what does this mean for me? It means I can now change the entire cable out as well and do a testing on another cable. So we'll actually pick another cable for us, and I'll even pick another uh, ID uh, for us too, so that way you know I'm doing that. So I'll go ahead and we'll actually change it to a little bit of a longer cable. And I'll just put this here. And then once I have that particular cable down, now I take the other end of my cable, and I'm hiding the length on purpose for what we're going to end up seeing here. We're going to plug it back in for this test, and that way we can also begin to see some other things too. Let me see if I can readjust that so that we can run this test again. I hit the auto test. And now we can see that I have a much longer cable that's in place and that this one actually did end up passing. And we can see that, yes, at the 1G, it gives me a nice little check mark. It shows me everything is good. And it even shows me as possible that even up to 10G is perfectly fine to be using with this bigger cable. So about 151 feet, that doesn't necessarily mean that's the overall length. It means that's the shortest pair. So if I also select pairs, I can also see in terms of contrasting this, that here it is, pairs one and two is 153 feet, and then here's pair, uh, pair four and five, which looks like almost 100 and, uh, actually 159 feet that we end up seeing, and you can even see the rest. So there's a lot of good information that we get from something like this. Once again, just to be able to save this, I'm gonna hit OK, so I can save that result for something later if I need to. So at this point, you might be wondering, well, what's the big deal? Well, you can go back in and actually start seeing some of those different tests if you want to. Now for us, what we're going to do, if I hit results now, you can now see that the results are actually listed right here for us. And I can see the actual time that it took place. I can even see these little other marks. And this might be a guide that you have to look into the user manual to help you to kind of decipher that a little bit more. So you might be wondering like, why is this good? This is a good particular example for us. If I had 100 cables I was tracing out just to verify everything's good, I can go ahead and load up to, I think, uh, a thousand of these possibilities here, and that way I can save them, store them on the device, and then upload them inside of the Link IQ software from Flute Networks as well. So let's go to my PC and see that particular procedure. All right, so now that we have our results on, of course, our Link IQ, it means that we can upload them into our Windows PC to be able to actually generate records as we need to. So this is where it's valuable when you have a lot of different tests that you've run, but you want to see them all together. So you can download from Flute Networks the Linkware software, just like I previously did. And now, of course, we can go into it. And if you plug it in using a USB-C to USB, it should recognize inside of Windows through plug and play. And now inside of your software, we should be able to go to File, Import From, and notice it actually is designed for multiple devices. We'll select Link IQ. And when we select Link IQ, you'll see it will actually give us the ability to import. What are we actually trying to import? What is it actually going to be? Notice that there are 15 records here. But let's say that I want to actually select the records that I want to import instead of all 15 of them. So that's the idea that we can also do. Let's go to Cable Test as well. And you'll see that there's the test that I actually have been running at some point. So I'm going to select all the items right here. Then I'm going to import them as well. So this will give us the ability to begin to import those records in to, of course, the Linkware software. From here, we can generate different reports as we need to. And we can see what has actually been happening on our devices here. So now, of course, I can select and I can actually see some of the ones that actually have a fail uh, test to them uh, as well. And then here's one that has a pass. And here's another one that also has a pass record too. Some details if we choose to. So 
So all the information that we might expect to see here also gets transferred over here for us to do better analysis. So that is some of the power that we can have with this new system that they have. Now, along with that, of course, there is going to be other things that we can do. So the idea of that auto test really does allow us to test a cable, but we also want to be able to test the switch too. So let's go ahead and do that as well. All right, so now we're ready to actually do a switch test. Now, when we start talking about the idea of a switch test, what are we really going to see from the Link IQ when we plug this directly into, let's say, a Cisco switch? Well, we can find out a bit of information and really even help us to trace down where that cable might be plugged into. So I've now got this connected to one of our ports that we can see right here on the switch, and I've got the tester here. Instead of doing an auto test this time, I'm going to select to switch test as well. Now, this, uh, the switch that I'm plugged into is also a PoE switch, so we'll see some additional information. From that point, I'll go ahead and click OK. And now notice that it actually does change here to switch test. And now when we plug in, we should begin to get some of the details and the information from our switch as it finds information. Now, as we take a look at this example here, notice it's actually going through also a PoE test to show us some of the limitations or the actual strength of our PoE as we go through here. So right away, you can see exactly what port that I am plugged into. Gigabit Ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 7. I can even see the name that was assigned, the host name that was assigned to this switch uh, right here on our screen as well, which is going to be demo.itpro.tv. And I can even verify what VLAN it is plugged into, which is going to be VLAN 10. And then, of course, the different speeds in which we can actually also get tested at. And then from down here, we can start seeing that there it is. For PoE, it actually is a single connection. Here's where we're seeing this, the class three hardware, and then the results of that 13 uh, watts at the power device, and then 56.3 under load, 36 uh, uh, volts minimum. You name it, we can actually find out a lot more of this information. Now, by having something like this, it actually makes it a lot easier because if you're searching for a particular VLAN, let's say I want to move that to just a different port, I actually go to another port, uh, let's say, this one over here, just as an example, right? I can run the switch test again and see if I get a different result. Then I know if that port's in a particular VLAN or not by doing something like that. And you can see this one is in VLAN 20. So we can run through that test and it will give us all the same features and information, but we're not done yet. There's a couple of neat things, especially when you have a ton of different ports that you're plugging into and you want to verify whether or not that cable is actually on that uh, particular one too. So notice that there's actually this little wrench up here for tools. If I select tools, from here, we can actually blink a port light. So we'll go back and we'll take a look at my switch. I can now go ahead and click on blink port light. And in a moment, you can see where it's actually blinking the port light for us. So I can identify that that is the proper cable, that is the proper port that we're talking about. So it really does help in terms of the switch test. All right, now that's not all that it can do. We can actually do more such as actually being able to put a toner on it and allow us to find a particular cable. And we'll do that next. All right, so one of the last things I want to show you is this idea, okay, which is going to be using the probe and the toner. Now, the great thing is this also generates a tone for us, and it doesn't matter who actually made the probe. It's fairly generic here. You can, of course, use it with flute network tones, uh, you know, toners that they have, but you can also use them with other ones too. So let's go ahead and take a look here and we'll see. There it is, there's a tone generator. There is IntelliTone that you can of course use with Flute Networks. But notice these other analog tones that we have available. And instead of just simply generating out a simple tone, it kind of generates out a little jingle for you that you can hear. Right now it's actually doing that. And now if I take my probe and I go ahead and I put that and I probe the actual cable, I can hear it. It's fairly faint because of the noise of the fan itself but it is generating a little tune for me, and that way I know that I am connected to the device itself. Well, we do want to thank, well, all of our friends over there at Flute Networks for, of course, sending us this device to test. And we also, of course, want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell for notifications. Well, thank you for watching.